Diana, you are still muted. Good afternoon and welcome to our Hennepin Healthcare System 2021 Annual Meeting. I am Diana Vance Bryan, Chair of the Hennepin Healthcare Board. On today's agenda, we will start by looking back at the past year and hear from executive leaders with an update on our health equity journey, response to COVID and new services that are opened their doors this year. Then we'll look ahead and learn more about the vision for population health and how we are reimagining healthcare through campus planning. If you have any questions as we go along, please post them in the chat. We'll post a recording of this meeting online with a summary of questions and comments that we receive so that we can cover those that we don't get to in our time together today. If you provided your email, we'll send you a link to the recording when it's live. Otherwise, I encourage you to go to hennepinhealthcare.org and you'll find the annual meeting information in the About Us section. This is an extension of today's regularly scheduled meeting of the Hennepin Healthcare System Board of Directors. So I want to start by introducing the board. The board members include community leaders who give their talents and time as volunteer directors of the healthcare system. Jennifer DeCubellis is pictured at the top on the left. Next to her is Irene Fernando, Jacob Gale, Marion Green, Brock Nelson, Chris Peterson, are the Prasad, Brian Ranallo, Steve Thompson, Kathy Thunheim, Craig Warren, Tom Wyatt, and David Ibarra. They put a lot of time and passion into their service on this board and our community um, and the group are grateful. I also want to recognize the Hennepin County Board. Hennepin Healthcare System is a subsidiary corporation of Hennepin County, and the County Board approves the corporation's annual budget and has other responsibilities that set forth in our bylaws. As you saw, Chair Marion Green and Commissioner Irene Fernando currently serve on the Hennepin Healthcare Board. Thank you also to Commissioners Lundy, Conley, Gattel, La Tondres, and Anderson for your partnership. The community is involved more than ever before in guiding our healthcare system. We have community members on our board committees, the Research Institute Board, and the Foundation Board. In addition, we have a number of advisory boards and groups that bring expertise from the community to help guide our system. Thank you to all who share their time and talents. We also want to recognize the members of the executive leadership team who together with CEO Jennifer D. Cubellis set the direction and guide the organization as it seeks to fulfill its critical mission of partnering with the community, our patients and their families to ensure access to outstanding care for everyone while improving health and wellness through teaching, patient and community education and research. Finally, we want to recognize and thank our Hennepin Healthcare heroes. You saw some of them earlier, the physicians, the nurses, and other team members who provide daily healthcare and prevention services to our community, often at risk to themselves and their loved ones. And now I'd like to introduce Jennifer to lead the rest of our meeting this afternoon. Jennifer. Thank you, Diana. And I want to start by acknowledging, um, Diana, you for your board leadership. Diana has been our board chair for the past two incredible years and has guided us through what has been um, unprecedented times for sure. So as we begin, we're going to look at a year, the year in review in, to start. And it's fitting that we start with our equity journey because there's probably no more important work for us and for our community. In August of 2020, our Hennepin Healthcare Board passed a resolution declaring health equity a strategic priority. They called for action on health equity to be framed around five specific strategies, supporting health equity work, addressing the social determinants or influencers of health that our system can impact through healthcare services, including socioeconomic status, physical environment, and healthy behaviors, they charged us with addressing individual 
and institutional and systemic racism within our healthcare system. They also charged us with building and enhancing community partnerships to improve health equity and advancing our human resources, our vendor and our grant activity, all with an equity lens. No easy lift, but the right work at the right time. So in January of 2021, Dr. Neka Cedarstrom joined Hennepin Healthcare as the first Chief Health Equity Officer. She's going to tell us a little bit about the incredible work that our new Health Equity Department has been accomplishing in this short time over the past year. Neka? Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I started in January and one of my first responsibilities was to put together a team so that we could address many of the issues that were lined up before I even got there from back in August. Our team is of six people right now and they bring a diverse group of skill sets and um, knowledge and experience, which has made it really wonderful to work with. And we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We started this journey early on in the year. And as you all remember at that time, we were in the midst of the pandemic and vaccines being rolled out. So one of the first things that we did, even though we weren't yet fully developed in our team, was to create an opportunity to try and improve the access of vaccines for our community. We knew that disparities were real and that they were rampant in the communities that we serve. So we thought that it would be very important to figure out a way to partner and address this issue. We reached out to our trusted community voices and we asked how can we be of service? We asked how to partner with them to provide COVID vaccines to the community. And that response was amazing and well received. We vaccinated over 10,000 people this spring, which we're really, really proud of. And we did it in churches and other cultural centers across the area. And now we're planning a fall drive in which we'll be targeting our youth and young adults. And we'll be back in the community at those locations for booster shots as well. One of the really most important things that the community made clear to us was to prioritize the opportunity for workforce development. We recognize that priority is necessary, especially for our long-term health equity work as well. So we have focused on working to create a diverse environment. And one of the ways that we did that was committing to building a workforce and starting with the young. We've launched a talent garden program to inspire and support our historically excluded youth in careers in healthcare. There is a number of initiatives that we've put forward and our big event will be starting on December 4th, which is our first ever youth summit. We will host about 86, I'm sorry, 80 young black men uh, at this youth summit from the ages of 12 to 18. And it's entitled Black Men with Stethoscopes. And the idea of course is to provide a wonderful day of highly interactive experimental learning uh, featuring our own colleagues at our own house doing things that we love to do every day. This program will be an opportunity for these young men to not only fall in love with medicine, but provide an option for job shadowing to learn how to be the, the various things that they see, a plan for a paid summer internship and to be enrolled into our mentoring program. Some of the other issues that we needed to focus on was how to address the individual, institutional and systemic racism within our own walls. And to do that, one of the things that we started is to develop our own employee resource program. And that program is called the Collectives. There will be 13 employee-led interest groups under this collective programs. And the idea was to identify and address experiences of our diverse employees, especially highlighting the employees of color and the issues that they face every day to try and create and build a culture of belonging. We want to make sure that we make our teams feel that they are as important to us as our community that we serve. We are also working on an anti-racism policy that's in its final stages and it will be uh, implemented soon. Um, and we are working through an education platform that will help to address a lot of the questions and issues that we know are pervasive around the concept of health equity and how racism affects the outcomes of our patients and our teams and how they work together. That is, will be done within an educational framework, include several elements under it. We continue some of these efforts with uh, some of the other things that you see listed here. We've got a cultural comfort food program that will provide culturally responsive food options that promote healing in our, cult in our culturally diverse patient populations. Our menu is currently in development and I can't wait for some of the food options that will be available. They sound amazing. We uh, enlisted help from an outside consulting group called Gramercy 
to look at our health equity landscape from a 360 perspective, and that is in its final stages. And we will be getting the solutions, a building document that they have put together. They worked with both internal and external stakeholders. So I'm excited to see what options they bring forward as ways to help improve health equity from internally and external elements. We have a partnership and development with the NCQA as they try to create a health equity accreditation standard um, that right now we are only one of two others in the whole country that have been asked to help with building this initiative because of our health equity work. They're really excited to partner with, with us on that. So that's a really, um, not just a high honor, um, but it's a really amazing opportunity to be one of the first to be accredited. We created four work groups in our community conversations that we typically have. Some of you may be in those work groups, and we thank you very much for joining and volunteering. Uh, those work groups will, are themed, and they will help us to set our strategies as we move forward. We also have a uh, monthly health equity newsletter that we're working on uh, putting out every, every month that shows highlights of what we've been up to. Uh, and what we're doing and has opportunities for some of the, the departments that have partnered with us to highlight some of the work that they're doing as well. And then our next steps program, which many of you have heard from, has got a lot of press lately. And we're really proud of the work that they're doing for victims of gun violence. We've added more staff and expanded to Abbott Northwestern in addition to the work with North Memorial. And we've got additional staff that will be coming in the beginning parts of the year to make sure that we have enough people to help address the issues around gun violence and our patients that come to our doors. We continue on this journey together and we truly appreciate the leadership of our board and the guidance of all that we've received from our community to help us make this effort really a strong initial out of the gate effort. And so I thank you very much for that. Now turn thank it you. over. Thank you, Dr. Cedarstrom. And um, it's quite amazing. That was really just a sampling of the work that the health equity team has leaned into and it's helped push across the organization and in partnership with our community. And it's amazing to think uh, Dr. Cedarstrom and her team have only been here for 10 months. So I look forward to, um, as we look ahead into the next year, um, what is possible. At our annual meeting last year, uh, we shared an update on COVID-19 and how our system responded. The most optimistic of us, I would include myself in that, hoped that it would be a topic at just last year's annual meeting, but 12 months later, we continue to see the impact at the, of the healthcare infrastructure across the state of Minnesota on our own healthcare system, on our team members, and in particular on our community. It has brought out the best of us in trying times, and I'm really proud of the resilience and the compassion I have continued to see across these difficult 20 months across our entire healthcare system and the support from our community. Our interim chief medical officer, Dr. Dan Hoodie, will provide an update on the past 12 months when it, as it relates to COVID. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you to the board for giving me the time to walk through some of the highlights of our response to the challenges of COVID-19 over the past year. I'd like to start by highlighting that all the outcomes of the care we provide are truly a team or more like a village effort. The rapid cycles of change due to COVID-19 related impacts has created the need for cross collaboration, unlike anything modern healthcare has seen before. So for this overview, instead of all stats and numbers, I'd like to spend the majority of the time highlighting the true team effort it takes to care for our patients and the communities in, in these times. Our employees are truly the heroes here. So one slide on numbers and the rest on the team. So looking at the numbers, it's really unbelievable when you think of the human impact of this tiny little virus on Hennepin Healthcare and the communities we served over the past years. Over two for COVID, each with its own patient, family, and care team story and impact that sits behind it. Over 200,000 vaccinations given with long days and weekend events to get us there. Uh, over 95% of employees vaccinated here at Hennepin. Almost unfathomable numbers given that 18 months ago, we basically knew nothing about the COVID-19 virus. Now I'd like to highlight the work and the teams behind the effort. The point of the picture on the left of this slide is not for you to be able to read the details, but instead to highlight the unbelievable amount of thought that goes into one single clinical care guideline for COVID treatment, assembled by a team of Hennepin clinical experts that have been analyzing the scientific evidence from day one of the pandemic and translating it into the exact recipe with citations to provide the most up-to-date and safest care to our patients. We're also creating the evidence and knowledge, including over 20 COVID-related research studies completed or in process that are being led by our HHRI researchers. 
And let's not forget about our ECMO teams, expanding life-saving treatment, particularly to those patients experiencing acute single organ failure with no other life-saving options. Without our ECMO program, these patients would have died, quite frankly. Finally, our primary care teams have led the creation of a COVID home monitoring program into the homes of our discharged patients. Beyond just COVID, we're experiencing an acute care surge of unprecedented proportions, and our frontline teams are stepping up all over, coming together in multidisciplinary fashion to respond to the daily challenges we face. Our medical trainees and residents, so important to our pipeline of future physicians, as on a side note, nine out of 10 of our active medical staff were once trainees at Hennepin. These residents have stepped up and volunteered to take additional shifts into high need areas in the hospital. Directing your attention to the top left of the slide, what you see there are inpatient vital signs uh, of bed capacity that we look at multiple times daily. And our inpatient medical directors and operational leaders continue to come up with creative guidelines to provide care to patients throughout the various care locations that have available space in the hospital. Finally, our emergency preparedness teams liaison with our health system partners. For example, using the inpatient case numbers trends in the chart seen in the bottom left of the slide, to help level load emergency department and, and ICU patients throughout the metro region and state. All along the way, we have team members tracking our outcomes. How the best stay the best is by always recognizing that they can be better. With all these changes COVID has put upon us, our teams are ensuring that we are understanding in real time where we're succeeding and where we have opportunity. Ranging from our pharmacists tracking our COVID therapy outcomes to our clinical quality teams providing weekly summary data to each unit in the hospital, to our mortality review team highlighting COVID related themes from our case reviews. Moving upstream out of the COVID treatment and into the COVID prevention realm, let's talk vaccinations for a minute. Our operational teams, particularly our ambulatory and community connection teams, in conjunction with our community partners, have done amazing work continuing our vaccination outreach to needed areas and monitoring and responding to equity gaps. What you see on the top of the slide here is a graph highlighting the results of this work. The green line is Hennepin, the blue line is the state average. Higher is better and it indicates that Hennepin has been providing more equitable administration of vaccines than the rest of the state. What you see on the bottom of the slide is an example of the reports that our amazing IT and informatics colleagues have created and routinely analyzed that show the opportunity that still remains in the equitable distribution of vaccines, analyzing opportunity by such filters as race, language, zip codes, and responding in kind to observe gaps. Speaking of team members, let's focus for a minute on staff safety and well being. Our infection prevention and occupational health teams continue to churn out the most up to date, evidence based guidelines and recommendations to keep everyone safe at work, the importance of which is amplified by the current impacting healthcare nationwide. On top of this, these same teams have quickly stood up and implemented an employee vaccination effort that is nearing 100% compliance. Our supply chain colleagues continue to ensure we have adequate supplies of PPE and other equipment to keep our employees safe and protected physically. And finally, our psychology and psychiatry departments have worked tirelessly to have the critical incident and staff support available as needed 24 seven around the clock in response to the acute challenges and crises that have been arising so often throughout the pandemic. Last but certainly not least is our communication teams. Uh, and there's three key areas to highlight here. The first is communication for our employees. With our excellent communication team led by Tom Hayes, these teams have done a tremendous job at keeping the 7,000 strong at Hennepin informed about the latest related to COVID, operational changes, employee well-being and providing an ongoing venue for employees to provide feedback. This is no small task. Second, communication to our patients. Our patient representative team has put together countless communications for our patients related to a variety of COVID related issues and doing so in multiple languages in partnership with our wonderful interpreter services. Finally, communication to our communities. Our employees, particularly our medical staff members, have been consistent voices of advocacy for needed changes and discussions at the regional and state level in response to the situation on the ground at any given time during the COVID pandemic, appearing in numerous publications and television spots. This hopefully gives you a brief but broad glimpse of the heroes at work here at Hennepin on any given day during the pandemic. I just wanna conclude by saying what an honor and privilege it's been to be a part of such an amazing, unprecedented team effort during the pandemic, and that we appreciate the board support of the work that we do 
and the employees who do it every minute of every hour of every day. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you, Dr. Hoodie. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say your steady leadership from the clinical perspective has been incredible over two amazing years. So thank you for everything and, and for highlighting the team um, that we have absolutely at play here in order to provide the services to our community. I will go on to look at, um, despite the ongoing impact of COVID, we continued to innovate to adapt and to grow to meet the needs of our community. In 2021, I wanna make sure that everyone knows we opened the doors to one expanded service and reopened the doors to another. And both of these came together in new ways and with bright spots for the future. This first graphic shows you our Red Leaf Center for Family Healing. It saves and improves lives through multi-generational mental health, parenting, and mind, body, spirit support for individuals, both during their pregnancy and in the early years of parenting, ensuring healthy starts for everyone. This new space, and you'll see some pictures here, is at the corner of 6th Street and Chicago Avenue, adjacent to our, our hospital and health system. And it was created thanks to the Red Leaf Foundation to provide a warm and wonderful setting to support families partner with our community and to foster health and healing. There are new spaces for our mother baby program, outpatient mental health services for individuals expecting a baby, parenting young children or planning a pregnancy. It brings together a healing and supportive environment to make sure that those experiences are positive, supported and community led. It even includes a teaching kitchen, kitchen for healthy living. It is a stunning, uh, dis, it's, it's a stunning programmatic space. It is culturally representative through local sourced art that can be seen throughout the space, reflecting our mission, reflecting the people in the community we serve and evoking the feelings of safety, love and belonging. And I can't say enough how this space is really about investing in the health of our community and the health of families and really lends itself to our strategic direction of focusing on prevention, early intervention, and healing community spaces. And earlier this month, we reopened East Lake Clinic. The clinic was closed over a year ago after we lost the former site during the fires last year. Our community told us very quickly that the clinic mattered. Our team members, rallied and stayed connected to their patients. They provided care at our Whittier Clinic over the past year in partnership with our Whittier Clinic team. And we've been more committed than ever to come back and to come back not just the same, but even stronger. Our new location is located inside the Hennepin County Human Services Center, located at 2215 East Lake Street. We're partnering with Hennepin County's Human Services and Public Health to create the reality of what we believe healthcare should look like based on the input that we've had from community. It brings together all the services and supports that we've heard from community are so essential in their ability to thrive and be healthy. Things like benefits programs, women and children's programs, mental health supports, employment supports, all focused around making wellness easy for our community. We've made it more accessible and we're teaming together in new ways to drive healthcare for the future forward. We're still caring for the neighborhood that cared so much for us. As we look ahead beyond new space, beyond um, the, the new programs that have opened up, we wanna look ahead and share a couple of updates on two other large transformation activities that are happening across Hennepin Healthcare. And those are population health and our campus development planning. Both of these efforts are focused on community and focused on investing in health and wellness and truly transforming healthcare so that we make health and wellness easy for our community. And I will pass off to Dr. Danielle Rabishaw and Amy Harris, who will help us look at the progress we're making on population health for our community. Great, thank you so much, Jennifer. <clears throat> As Jennifer mentioned, my name is Danielle Robertshaw, and I am a very proud 
Hennepin Healthcare Primary Care Physician, as well as the Senior Medical Director for Population Health. I and my colleague, Amy Harris, appreciate the opportunity to share some of the great population health work that we're currently undertaking. In the beginning of 2021, Hennepin Healthcare began a five-year journey to really bring alive an organization-wide population health strategy. The strategy is supported and sponsored by our executive leadership team, approved by our board, customized for HHS, and stakeholder-driven with the support of a dedicated team. The term population health has been used and understood differently depending on the context. At Hennepin Healthcare, we have defined it as the strategies and care processes that effectively manage and have positive impact upon the health and outcomes of our populations. This work will entail a fundamental shift, moving, moving from a focus on sick care to a focus on well care. And I think as a provider system and as a provider, this is in full alignment with our hearts and our mission of supporting health and well being of our populations. And the business side of healthcare and reimbursement structures are also reorienting in a way that supports the goals of providing the right care at the right time in the right place, really to truly incentivize value over volume. We're going to use this opportunity to build off of amazing work from across the organization and across the years to bring care teams together to build out foundational capabilities and care processes, both internally and across the greater ecosystem to drive improved patient outcomes and experience. 2021 has been an active year of learning and planning and is setting the stage for the work in 2022 and beyond. In the next six months, we'll be working on the processes and data capture to support whole person and whole population knowledge. This will be inclusive of both clinical and health-related social needs. We will use this information to inform how we aim resources and processes to support the patients, families, and care teams going forward. 2022 will simultaneously kick off with a focus on bringing primary care teams and frontline staff together to help design capabilities to best care for populations proactively across settings and across time. We're really excited for this work and we'd like to share a video that we hope will leave you excited as well. Thank you for this opportunity to present. At Hennepin Healthcare, we're here for life. That means taking care of people when they're sick and caring for the whole person with the focus on wellness and prevention. Our system was originally built for sick care and our payments are tied to the services we deliver. So how can we rebuild ourselves to help all of our patients achieve health and wellness at lower cost while also improving work life for our care teams? Many of us are already working hard to support the wellness of our patients and their communities. Our goal is to change the way the whole system delivers care and how we get paid. This is called population health or accountable care and it's how we'll realize our mission to equitably improve care, improve patient experience, and manage the cost of care for everyone. We'll use our care team's expertise and data about the patients we serve to deliver holistic, proactive care. And with this new care model, it's outcomes rather than services that generate revenue. This keeps patients and their overall well-being at the center of our work. Our patients are counting on us to make the healthcare system and their lives better. It won't be fast or easy to change how we're built. But together, we can create a healthy community and truly be here for life. Well, good afternoon, I'm Amy Harris and I am the Population Health Director. I have the opportunity to work with Danielle. Um, and in addition to that, um, important work that she introduced, there's another area of accountability that sits inside population health at Hennepin. And that's our work um, to be able to understand and address community health needs. So I wanted to highlight two interesting activities and then look ahead to the work um, that we are teeing up for next year in the arena of community health. Um, so both of these are efforts that I think um, embody the work of Hennepin, they reflect some creativity we had to employ because of the impact of the pandemic. The effort on the left um, was a, a partnership that we um, executed with Open Arms of Minnesota to be able to provide medically tailored home delivered meals to patients, 
who were recuperating at home from a, uh, with a COVID positive diagnosis. And actually an important internal partner to us was that COVID home monitoring program, which Dr. Hoodie referenced in his earlier remarks. Um, but through this effort, we were able to help keep people home, get them the food and the support they needed for individuals that were food insecure. We were able to help in um, addressing needs in our communities that were hardest hit with the pandemic. Um, had great feedback from individuals served by the program and we were able to deliver over 40,000 meals through that particular initiative. Another um, effort we started, which was much smaller in more of a testing space, was um, work we did in partnership again with community uh, to be able to try an additional approach, a different approach to try to address uh, maternal health disparities. Um, and so the, the, op the option that we provided to African-American pregnant patients served at Hennepin Healthcare was the option to be matched in a proactive way to a community doula that was an African-American community doula living in their communities. And so we were building on the success of doulas in their evidence-based practice to impact health outcomes and pairing it with this culture congruent element. And we, in the early work of the pilot, had great feedback from participants. We're now moving this into sort of our next phase of work. So when we look ahead at the work for next year, uh, we'll, be in, we'll be embarking on another assessment process. So every three years, healthcare uh, hospital systems go through an assessment where we intentionally step back and define our community we serve and, and reflect on information that does exist and gather new information with the intention of working through a process with community to actually identify what are the most important health needs from the community's perspective that we should be working on. We did our assessment in 2019 and the priority health need in 2019 was framed by our community as access to culturally responsive care and services. So we'll go through this process again now in 22, um, taking the steps as noted here to be able to help identify the insight from our community about what are those important health issues we should be working on going forward. The assessment cycle not only identifies that uh, priority need or needs, but then frames an action plan around it that will then um, guide our work over the next three years. Thank you, Amy and Dr. Robesha. Uh, I think what you've heard here is we heard loud and clear from community that health and wellness and investing early in prevention, in interventions and making sure it's culturally responsive care were important to the community we serve. And like many others that you've heard from today um, in the past year, this has been stood up, it's been created, and we're excited for what the future holds for that work and the investment in the system working for the people that we provide the care to. We want to briefly look at uh, another transformational project. Uh, we have some pretty old buildings here at our downtown campus um, that are end of life. And instead of rebuilding a building, we really are taking some time to step back, engage our community to understand how they want to have healthcare services of the future delivered, what those healthcare services look like, and then we will build facilities to respond to what the community tells us they need in order to realize their own personal wellness and the wellness of our entire community. And so we have Derek Hollins joining us as our CFO who's leading this work. I'll pass it over to Derek. Uh, Jennifer, thank you very much. My name is Derek Hollings, and I am humbled and honored to talk to you about reimagining healthcare through campus planning. We started this project known as the Comprehensive Campus Development Plan, or CCDP, back in the summer. I want to emphasize that this project is not simply a capital project. It is more than a facilities and a building plan. It is much more than that. This planning process aims to deeply understand our community health needs and what our team members need to provide the best care possible to our patients. We are cre creating our future together with you so that Hennepin Healthcare works better for all of us.
The planning process consists of three phases occurring over nine months. The first phase, learning together, involved dynamic listening and learning with our community and team members. I'm excited to share more details about what we are planning. We are now entering phase two, creating together. Think of this phase almost like a workshop in a garage. We're inventing models, testing, and refining and refining several alternative approaches to achieving health equity. It's a space for us to combine community wisdom and quantitative insight to plan and then build a better future. During phase three together, we we developed a we will develop an achievable plan to realize this future. What you don't see is phase four, and phase four will be the implementation phase, and that will occur over the next uh, five to ten years. Throughout phase one, we listen to learning. We listen and learn with over a thousand people in English, Somali, Spanish, Hmong. We, we, uh, we work through several different modalities of listening, such as we had one-to-one -one interviews. Uh, we engaged in virtual and in-person small groups discussions. We had community virtual forums. Uh, we had online surveys as well. So as we enter phase two, creating together, we will test and redesign these ideas, working along community designers with working along with community designers, the project leadership team, and our strategic partners. We will, we will also think about the buildings and space within and around downtown locations. We will consider ways for our spaces to improve care delivery, as well as community well-being. Changes to our buildings, campus, and facilities will be designed to achieve our bold vision for equitable health care. Our commitment to bringing more equity to the health of our community will be visible in everything we do as we plan for our future together, more equity in terms of access to healthcare, the provision of high quality of care and the research and educational programs we support, and most of all, in how we make sure Hennepin Healthcare is a place in which all of our communities feel comfortable and respected and welcomed. We're exploring a few questions. Uh, we're asking, is this going to improve care at Hennepin Healthcare? Are we perpetuating harm? Are we being, are we being transformative? We will find answers to these questions. To learn more about this project, and sign up for updates, please go to hennepinhealthcare.org front slash our future. Thank you, Derek, and um, the incredible time and energy and effort you and the larger team are putting into this. Um, we shared earlier some beautiful space across Hennepin Healthcare, and I look forward to what we're building and what we're visioning in partnership with community, truly being community space not the organization's buildings, but space for health and healing across our community. So thank you, Derek, for that. Uh, I hope you had a chance to see at the very beginning of the evening tonight, our video. At the start of our meeting, we recognized our team members and our commitment to our community. This has been a long and difficult 18 months. In July, our team members were asked to be the Grand Marshals of the Minneapolis Aquitennial Torchlight Parade. 
to be recognized for their tireless work on the front lines of this global pandemic that has now become almost a normal, a new normal of full hospital beds and staffing challenges. One of our ambulances led the parade with a number of our team members walking behind them. As the team went by from the very first block to the very last block, our community along the route stood and cheered. They cheered the frontline workers. They cheered our team members who support them. And they thanked us for the sacrifices and the service that has been provided over these past 18 months. And I wish nothing more than our 7,000 strong team members could have all been there to hear the cheering, to take a bow. But if you know any of them, you know that's not why they do this work. They don't do it for the glory or for the praise. They do what they do every day and every night and every weekend for the patients and for our community. And our community was grateful. And we are equally grateful to each and every one of you who are joining us tonight. We are grateful that you're walking alongside us on this journey. We're grateful for your input, your engagement, your advisement. We are your health system. We don't take that honor nor that responsibility lightly. We are here together and we are committed to working together to realizing a healthier community for everyone. Your input and engagement is what's keeping us going and hopefully you heard that through the presentations this evening that you heard and you saw what you've told us, what your advisement is and that we're building healthcare for the future based on what we're hearing and um, being advised on by our community. We'll be posting this presentation at hennepinhealthcare.org. And if there's anything we discussed today that you would like to know more about, we'll include contact information on the annual meeting page so that you can connect. We're grateful for your time. We're grateful and proud to be of service to everyone in our community. Thank you for joining us tonight.